if you have a kid like that doesn't open up with you, sounds to me like you probably want this kid to be vulnerable with you, right? Well, if you want that kid to be vulnerable with you, maybe you should be vulnerable with them first. If you're not sharing yourself with them, how are they going to share, open up with you? So what you want your kids to, let's say, be communicating, be vulnerable, whatever it is for you, be authentic with you, then you need to show that first to those kids, I think. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another awesome episode of the Life in Your Show podcast. I'm your host, Jason Wojo. I'm joined by Polish Peter. And on the Life in Your Show podcast, we help people make more, work less, and live awesome lives. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. We go into business for ourselves. We we create lives that are are hopefully fulfilling, abundant, uh, full, of, full of all the things we want to do, and not a lot of things that we have to do. Like, I hate the have-tos. I love the get-tos. And so we have an awesome topic for you today, man. What is it? So you're asking me what the topic is. Well, I'll tell you what the topic is, all right? So the topic today is we're going to talk about kids and raising kids in today's world and raising kids with life and their values or life and their principles. How do you actually go about doing that? Mm. Because if you have kids or know some kids and you know what's going on out there when they go to schools or they're going somewhere outside of your household, what does that look like as far as you know raising those kids based on what we teach here at life on there. I think this is a super duper important topic to discuss because, you know, if you're a parent, like me and Voja are parents, I think it's a really important to be able to go and see, okay, how do we impart some of those principles, right? How do we actually help them grow in a way where we're not in my, you know, I'm in my twenties, I think. You're in your sixties, I think, Vojo, right? So you don't wake up when you're 60 and I'm like, man, I just wasted how much your life, right? Uh, so how do we impart those principles with our kids? Yeah, man, super important. But here's, here's the thing, dude, I want to dive into this is like, you know, right now, someone on, on listening to this right now is thinking like life and air principles. I can't even get my kid to like you know, do anything. Like how, how am I going to share this stuff? You know? And I think it's a valid concern. So what we're really talking about here is two things. One is how do you influence your kids? Right. And then how do you influence them? in a way that is uh, in their best interests and that will serve them long term. And you, listen, I'll be, I'll be the first to admit, man, you probably can agree with this, is like, you know, some things out there that our kids are exposed to are not the things you want them exposed to. And that's there's no way around it. Really, there isn't. I don't care if you're going to public school, private school, Christian school, not Christian school. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, kids are going to be exposed to stuff. So how do we start to, like, really influence our kids number one and let's just kind of let's just focus on that for a second before we talk about the life and your principal side of things yeah so strategy one you don't let them out of the house you keep them <laughs> in the house 24 7 and you do not let them out feed okay? them under the door yeah <laughs> obviously that doesn't work right and it's not a good idea so disclaimer okay so listen i think um you know one of the important things i think in this particular society because if you think about this you if you're a father or a mom or someone who is their, you know, caregiver or whatever, you are probably one of the most important, impactful people in their lives because they probably spend the most time with you, around you, growing up, right? So if that is the case, there's probably in some shape or form, they look to see how you are, who you are, what you do, not so much what you say, but what you do. So I think one of the most important things that you can do uh, for your kids to help them during this particular time in this world is to um, influence them by an example, like how you show up, what you do in life, right? What you, how you think about it this way. Um, one of the things that we talk about in life on there all the time is about being intentional, right? In order for your calendar to work, in order for you to be able to go and live the life that you want in order for you to get stuff done in your business, in your personal life and things like that. It is very important to be intentional because if you're not intentional, you know, five hours goes by and you haven't done anything. So what does that look like when it comes to being an example for your kids? Well, think about it. Are you being intentional in the time that you are spending with them? Are you being 100% with them or well, you're all over the place, right? Are you being intentional when you are saying you're going to be for home for dinner at six o'clock and at seven thirty and you're still not there? 
right? Are you being intentional when it comes to having conversations with your kids? Um, are you, you know, con- you know, like I said, present? Are you, when you're spending time with them, are you with them and not basically somewhere else? Because those are the kinds of things that I think that teach them, whether they're, you know, consciously realize it. I think there is some uh, subconscious influential way that shows them how to be in life. Because think about it this way. When they go out there and they do things with their friends or whatever the case may be, do you think they would be showing up much different, much more impactful and much more confident if they are themselves much more intentional? So yeah. I think that's just one thing that just, uh, I think it's a really important to make sure that you are that in life, right? So I think, you, you think? know, uh, I think modeling is definitely a first step because at the end of the day, listen, every parent knows this. You only have so much influence over your kids. Now, there is also a natural waning, I think. I think I kind of think of like an inverted bell curve where um, early on when they're young, you have a disproportionate amount of influence because they're spending a lot of time around you, but you're also, well, hopefully they are, right? Hopefully you're, you're spending that time with them. Um, it, but as they kind of get into the adolescent age, you know, the the, the teenager on age, th- then they start to think they know it all and your influence is diminished. The, the influence of their friends and society starts to take a little bit of a hold. And that's only because I think kids go through this phase of trying to identify who they are. Mm-hmm. And that that identity is apart from you and so just ex- ex- expect that first of all and be okay with it and you know don't don't freak out because that's just going to push them away and then i think as kids get older and they realize they didn't know anything maybe that 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 relationship and the influence is kind of rekindled and so a couple things why and the reason i mentioned that is because it's and you mentioned this man being present like it is so important for us to be with our kids and spend time with them if you want to influence them. Now, let me also give this caveat right off the bat. Like you can spend all the time with the, in the world, your kids, you could be doing everything that you think you're supposed to do as a parent and they could still go sideways. Like they could still turn prodigal. It is, there's no guarantees with this. Like, and, and if you have multiple kids, you know this. Um, I mean, dude, you have kids, you have multiple kids. I have multiple kids. Everyone's different. Every single kid is different. And I believe that's, that's even coming out of the womb. Like uh, my, my three-year-old now is very different than my other three-year-old was, which is very different than my other one. And so you, I, I'm giving you the permission to like, hey, do what you can do. But at the end of the day, you can't control. You can influence, but you can't control. So be okay with that. And that's, you got to let go of that. Um, so I just want to set the expectations appropriately. And so being present with your kids... And also the other thing that you, that you didn't mention, I think is really important is I think communication like, and so you modeling is one thing, but explaining to kids, uh, children, um, why you do certain things, you know, if you want, if you want them to be patient, you show patience with them. If you, um, if you're frustrated with something, explaining why you're frustrated rather than, you know, taking it out on them or, or even if it, even if they're, you know, frustrating you, you know, retaining that kind of level of like responsiveness that you would like them to show at some point in the future. Again, the modeling and just kind of communicating very clearly, I think is, is really, is really valuable. Like, and I, and I, this is one of the times, like, for instance, like right now, um, you know, when I bring, bring my kids to school, like I love that time in the car together with them. Cause I have that chance to like they're not distracted. They're not trying to play, you know, they're not trying to play with the toys or whatever. And we can just talk. And those moments are, I feel like very, very impactful. Um, and the more of that we can do, I think they'll learn, like they're not gonna learn everything. Right. And you can, yeah, mm-hmm. you can listen to, you know, Jim Rohn on in your car or, or, you know, the latest, whatever business improvement book, if you want, or self-help book while they're in the car, and maybe that has an effect. Maybe, they, maybe they end up just hating riding with you, but like, you know, I think this, the communication side of thing is, is really, really important as well. Yeah. I think that's, you know, um, important fact to bring up because think about it this way. Um, you're an adult probably listening to this particular podcast. Has anyone have ever told you that you're kind of like your mom or kind of like your dad, right? that you sort of like them. If that's the case, is it possible that that you've been influenced by them in some shape or form growing up to be able to become somewhat like them? Whether they did it intentionally or unintentionally, you pick things up 
right? Um, and how, why did you pick things up? Well, maybe because you went from the perspective of, you know what? I like how my dad is. I like my dad. I like hanging out with him. So I want to do things with him. I want, you know, think about this or like my uncle, when I was growing up, I would constantly sit in this workshop, watch him, what he's doing and how he's doing later on became an architect. Right? So there is this, you know, kids want to you know, be like, they want to be loved. They want to be appreciated too, just like everybody else. So if you recognize that, or maybe you've did it with a parent, like think about like my dad, I made that decision when I was eight years old, I'll never be like you. I, you know, because yeah, of he ways, was. Right? So yeah. you went the other way, right? But it was still some kind of an influence based on what your parents or the most significant people in your life did. So that is probably happening with you kids as well. So when it comes to communication, when it comes to being there with them, here's the question that I would encourage every single one of you to ask yourself. If you guys recognize or remember in life, and we talk about constantly about having a vision, have a life vision. That's one of the biggest things that we talk about in life and all the time. What does your life vision look like? That includes your family, that includes your relationships and things like that. So when you are being intentional about that vision, you are going to write what you want your relationships to look like. So you're going to probably say something like, I have, you know, amazing relationship with my kids. We spend quality time together or whatever it is that you put on there, right? And, you know, how you envision those relationships to be in the future. Now, if that's the case, here is the important question that needs to pop up is this. In order for you to have this kind of a relationship, who do I need to be? Who do I need to become in order for that relationship to have a chance to be this way? Because Grant, like Vojo said, you know, you can't control them. You can't control what the other people say or do. However, you can control how you are in those relationships. So the question becomes, who do I need to be? Who do I need to become in that relationship? And that's a very sobering question because most of the times um, we don't look at that because we're like, we know what, especially with our kids, I'm right, kid, and you're wrong kind of a thing, right? Or I'm the dad or I'm the mom, and you're the kid. And we don't see them as, you know, um, sometimes we don't even like that thing, see them like, like the, the people that they are, right? They have brains, they have feelings, they have emotions, they have all kinds of different things. So when it comes to asking that question about me, who am I in that relationship and writing that stuff down and now I'm elevating myself to become, let's say, impactful or influential or um, present or you know, intentional uh, or curiously listening to my kids, that's why I'm elevating to now I start to connect with my kids a lot more and then how you want to um, you know, impact them Let's say, for instance, uh, you know, in Life on Air, we talk about sometimes whether or not you want to have debt, right? Do you want to have that or you don't want to have that? If that's your feeling, then you start asking and maybe having those kinds of conversations. But there needs to be a place for you to be able to actually have that conversation. They need to be open with you to be able to have that conversation. And it always starts with you, kind of looking from the perspective, who do I need to become? Who do I need to be in those conversations, in that relationship, in that communications, you know, uh, to be able to go and uh, have that kind of a relationship, have the kind of influence on them in that well, I think, world you know, that's yeah, going on right you, now. You snap at them, okay, you, you apologize. And some people are like, well, I'm not going to apologize to my kid. You should apologize to your kid because you're giving them the permission that they can apologize when they snap, when they're mean to somebody. You model sharing. You, and, and by the way, like mo a lot of, a lot of ways you influence your kid, like, you know, positive, you know, behavioral mm -hmm. psychology has shown that positive reward when taken in an approximate, like in a, in a, an approximal, meaning a soon time after, um, after that behavior that they're modeling is, is taken like that's that it's much more effective than punishment and so reward your kids when you see them doing the things you want them to do have discussions with them about money you know um and you know if you want to teach the value of of money like give them give them chores and have a cho have a chart next to your fridge with hey you get a dollar for this or two dollars for that and you're gonna do it weekly and then you have your responsibilities that you don't get money for and you kind of learn to contribute and you learn to share and, you know, um, 
And I think all of these things can can absolutely be modeled. And I and I like the idea what you said of like having you know having a family vision. You know, certainly when they're three years old, they don't they're, they're not it's not appropriate to have that. They're not ready for that yet. But you can start to say like, hey, we share in this family, or hey, we all contribute to clean the house together, and like get start. To, you can start in an age appropriate manner to start just showing those things. Um, and giving you know, back, do, hiding, that kind of stuff. Yeah. What's that? Like tithing, giving back, right? Tithing? Yeah. Tithing, yeah. Do you um, understand the words that are coming out? Barely, right barely. Yeah. I mean, a kid's not going to understand the word tithing, but you could say like, hey, we're going to give some, we're going to give some, you know, money to somebody who needs it. Right. And mm -hmm. you can, you can make, again, make it, make it age appropriate how you, how you describe it. Um, and so like, I think. I think all of these things that, and by the way, there's, and we'll talk about this in a different episode or we have in the past as well as like, you know, one of the exercises we do at our get a life getaway is like, what do you want your kids' lives to look like? And you can model that through yourself and show that to them and demonstrate it. And, and some of it's going to listen, like I said, some of it's going to take seed and some of it's not, but I mean, that's all you can do. Like you, you right. can't, you can't control them. And I think the overbearing, helicopter parents are doing their kids a disservice. And also, let me say this, you also got to let your kid kind of go through the ups and downs of life. Um, supporting, so supporting them as much as you can, but don't, don't disempower them by solving all of their problems for them either. Right. You know, I mean, the more you're talking about this, I think, you know, like for instance, my kids, uh, my youngest one right now is recording is, is about to be 17 in the next month. Um, which is crazy um, that my kids are that old. Uh, go figure. Um, so recently I had a discussion with him, you know, whenever he goes over to his house, to his friend's house, he's got his own car and he drives over there and things like that, hangs out, right? And he shares some different stories with me about, you know, how his friends are and, you know, they go to these different places and, you know, and sometimes, you know, they share about how this friend was all like, you know, um, being doing certain things, you know, and, and I ask him, so how are you responding to those situations? You know, what do you do? You know, how you see that happen, you know, and to kind of, you know, in fact, I kind of share with him, if I were you, I mean, I wouldn't do this or I wouldn't, what do you think about that, right? And see how they respond and what, you know, they, their decision making in those particular times, because guess what? You're not going to be there. So as you are talking with them, ask questions. I think it's important for you to ask a lot of questions because if you just tell them you should do this or you can't do this, and depending on what kind of a kid it is, if it's a kind of a rebel kind of a kid, guess what? He's going to go the opposite or he's not going to tell you, he's not going to share stuff with you, or he's going to go the completely opposite way. So it's really important. Like Vojo mentioned at the beginning, you know, um, you have, if you have multiple kids, they're all different. You need to have the conversations with them in a little bit of a different way, right? To be able to communicate with each one of them. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, the three, the how you want your kid's life to look like, that exercise that we do. Whether you come to our events or not, I think this is a powerful exercise for you to do to be able to discover a lot of things about your relationship with kids and about yourself. And uh, because people have, get a lot of benefits out of that particular exercise alone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I want to wrap it here in a second, but yeah, I just want to touch on one thing you said about hanging out with, with other kids. And cause listen, this is a huge influence on your kids. Success is who they hang out with. Um, and so you've got to get them to recognize who the right people are to hang out with. And so the way you can do that is like when your friends, sorry, when your kids see you around your friends, you can use those little opportunities to say like, Hey, they're my friend because you know, they really, they, they, um, they're happy when I'm, when I succeed and they, they're cheering for me and they support me and they, or whatever it is, like, don't, don't lay all this on them at once, but like, mm -hmm. you know, just tell them why your friends are third. Again, model, just tell them it's in communication, tell them why you choose to have those kinds of friends. And you can even say like, you know, I used to have other friends that, that, and then, and then say why you don't hang out with them anymore. Um, you know, I realized they were getting me in trouble all the time. And, and so, you know, you, you plant those seeds. Cause like you said, you cannot tell your kid what to do or know what not to do. Um, and expect it to be, you know, listen to accept that of fear, which is not a good motivator. Um, and so, yeah, that's a, that's a huge, huge point you made me in there. Well, listen, yeah. dude, 
I mean, we, that you brought that up, you know, so I'm just, as you're talking, I'm trying to figure out how do I break it to my kids and I don't know if I want to be friends with you anymore. So, oh, I mean, dude, I, I, I can help you have that conversation. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we're breaking up. <laughs> Dude, well, live listen. on the podcast. No, we're not. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. Look, we're still gonna be good. <laughs> well, listen. I hope you guys got something out of this. Like, I, listen. I know parenting is not the easiest thing in the world. It's, in fact, it's probably one of the most challenging things. Oh yeah. Um, but I it's think it's harder than rewarding. running a business, dude. Yeah. It's. It's. Well. It's in. <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, but in a way, there. There's some similarities there. Um, and, uh, but it's one of the most rewarding, fulfilling things as well. And so. As you're intentional about what you share with them, how you want to display yourself and be around them and embracing those life and your principles of like helping them realize they can be whatever they want to be, showing them what is possible and why you're able to have things or why you, you don't do certain things are all valuable. Yeah, I got to say one more thing before we wrap up just popped into my head. I've had a lot of conversations with some of my students about, let's say my kid, you know, doesn't share this with me. He won't open up, things like that, right? If you have a kid like that doesn't open up with you, sounds to me like you probably want this kid to be vulnerable with you, right? Well, if you want that kid to be vulnerable with you, maybe you should be vulnerable with them first. If you're not sharing yourself with them, how are they going to share, open up with you? So what you want your kids to, let's say, be communicating, be vulnerable, whatever it is for you be authentic with you, then you need to show that first to those kids, I think. Be vulnerable, again, shareable stories. Yeah, That's, again, modeling, right? What we yes, just said before. It is yep. so important. Guess what? Think about it this way. Every single thing we just said on this episode, it comes out of your vision. So that's why it starts with that vision. Be first, write that thing first, and you'll see how it's going to start shaping up in your life. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't yet, please subscribe because this helps us reach more and more people and change lives. We'll see you next week, everyone.